I greet you in the name of Jesus the Christ and welcome you to our worship on this February day. And we are sharing in the sacrament of communion. So I invite you, if you're not prepared to uh, have uh, some sort of bread and cup there, if you want to take a moment to, to go and, and gather something so that we can bless it together when it comes time, well, you'll have time to do that. Uh, I give thanks that our uh, prelude is offered today by Teresa Eichel, uh, our soprano, and Michael Noonan, who is playing the piano. So let us simply be still. Breathe in the Spirit of God and know that God is always there for us, our everlasting God, the creator to the ends of the earth. So let us be in the spirit of worship. Let's join together in our call to worship. God calls us from our aimless living and sets us free to share the gospel. In this, this time set apart, apart we listen, listen for, for God's, God's word. Come before God in awe and thanksgiving, grateful that God commissions us for service. Day, day by day, day we live, live our lives, lives and in, in our, our living. living we serve as disciples, offering new life to others. Praise God for opportunities to share love and good news. And now we join together in an old hymn, I Would Be True.
hymn speaks of constant prayer, let us join together in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, deliver us from knowledge that puffs us up and makes us insensitive to another's needs. We confess that sometimes our freedom has offended another's conscience and our carelessness has caused others to stumble and fall. Our actions have not been consistent with what we say and believe. Forgive us, O God, and restore us to a meaningful covenant with you and other seekers after your truth. Hear us as we pray. God is gracious and merciful, abounding in steadfast love. The burden of our sin is taken away. Free from sin, we enter into the joy of my life, Christ, a life of humble service and grace. Amen. of Christ be with you. And also with you. Scripture lessons come from Isaiah and the Gospel of Mark today, so I invite us to listen for the Word of God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth it is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Continuing in chapter 1 in the Gospel of Mark, I begin with verse 29. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. 
So he came and he took her by the hand and lifted her up. And then the fever left her. And she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And then he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Amen. Good morning. It's great to see all of you. Hopefully I'm somewhere far, far away where it's nice and warm, but I might not be. So I want you to take notice of this lesson today because you're going to have a lovely story read to you, especially during uh, church school. And if I were to say the alphabet, you would be able to tell me words that would be, begin with all the different letters. So let's try it. You know the song. It goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, and Y, and Z. Now I've said my A, B, C's. Tell me what you think of me. Well, what I want you to think is of all the words that you could use with those letters that begin with those letters. So your job is to find words that begin letter A like awesome or letter B like fair, whatever. But because it's church, I want you to come up with words that are positive, kind, affirming, anything that's something in the way of kindness. So that's your job. And then you can sing while you're doing it. And it should be a lot of fun to find out what you can come up with. And I hope you enjoyed church school this morning. Thank you. comes time to do a sermon, I try to discover something new in the readings, or I look for a hint to what might be lying behind the obvious message. But today's texts, they speak for themselves, I think. And in these days, we need to hear some good news about ourselves, about life, about God. And I'm not alone when I say there were times in this past year when I wondered where God was, or maybe where God was pointing us. 
especially with all of the things we were seeing with the pandemic and the financial downturn and uh, racial injustice, division in our country, and the list goes on. Looking out, we didn't see much good news. So why was our tension forced upon it? And then I was reading these, this passage from Isaiah and those verses near the end, uh, the verse near the end, verse 28. When I heard these words, it really hit home. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. These words, when I hear them, they strike a deep chord in me. And I thought about why that was. And it was almost like a deep comfort or a deep surety that I felt whenever, uh, that I feel whenever I hear these words. And when I read them again today, uh, they just feel very solid and heavy, like I've got a nice solid cloak around me. And I, think, I thought back and I said, I think that they were part of a call to worship that I heard often when I was growing up. So, but more than being familiar as I thought about the words, there's something rock solid about them. The ever, God is everlasting. It's a, it's a statement of faith. God is everlasting means God is for all time. And God is the creator of the ends of the earth. That means nothing gets past God. No one, no thing is forgotten by God. And so maybe that rock solid feel I get is a reminder that we are not alone. And I say that over and over, but this is what it says to me today. And it also says that God didn't intend for us to work out everything on our own either. God sent Jesus Christ as a living, breathing guide for us to learn from, to listen to, to follow, just like those first disciples back in the day. But then you might say, wait, those disciples, they dropped everything and followed Jesus. I, we live our lives right here. It's not like we can drop everything. Seems a little intimidating to try and live up to Simon and James and Peter and John, and Simon is Peter, um, James and John and all of the others. Because they were right there with Jesus. They got the message right from his, his own mouth. And then, then he sent them off to preach and to heal and to to challenge the, the injustices of the day with nothing but the clothes on their back and their sandals. That's a pretty high calling, if you ask me. And I think all of us feel a little bit like there's no way that we could live up to that. Well, I was reading something that a wise pastor wrote this week and some of the questions that he posed, I think, will help us. Maybe the, I'm not going to give them to his, you as questions, but more as observations. But I think they might help us better understand what it means to be a disciple, what it means to follow Jesus, and how to simply live our lives. David Lowe's pointed out that the disciples were ordinary people just like you and me. I mean, just look, they were out in the countryside and they came to Simon's house where he heard his mother-in-law was sick. I love the fact that David said, you know, I never really thought about it, but obviously if he had a mother-in-law, he must have been married. <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> but I, I actually hadn't thought about that either. So. What this passage is showing us is that the disciples had families too that they worried about, that they had to care for, and that Jesus took time to help out there too. He 
helped heal Simon's mother-in-law. So we have to take care of our families, and then, and so did Jesus. And it was okay to take that time. He wasn't always out on the road. But then we find out the next day, or after that healing, the word must have spread. You know, they say there was no internet back then, but I think the town gossips got around pretty quickly. So next thing you know, the whole town is gathered and, and the text, the scripture says they brought all the people to him. It must have been the disciples. But they, they all came to be healed. But then if you read a little more closely, you see that it says many were healed by D- Jesus and many had demons cast out. It didn't say he healed everybody. Jesus healed who he could. So there's another high bar that we might be setting for ourselves, that we have to do everything for everybody. Jesus healed who he could. So the next time you think you haven't done enough or you couldn't help everyone, remember that. Jesus took care of as many as he could. And though they did head off after a night's rest, but before they did that, Jesus didn't just finish, okay, we're done here, on to the next. He got up the next day when it was still dark out, and when he knew he would be able to have some time alone, he went away to a quiet place, and he prayed. I think he did it because he needed to recover his energy because it takes a lot out of you to be that kind of caregiver and he was a caregiver for everyone. But maybe even more important was the fact that I think he needed time to tell God just what was on his mind. He probably talked to God about how sad he was that so many people were ill. But then as he thought about it a little bit more, I, I imagine he might have gotten a little angry and said, why are so many people ill? Why, why are there so many injustices that these people can't get the help they need? And he might have been a little angry about all the trouble he saw in the world and recognized what a big job he had on his plate. But I like to think also at the end of that prayer where he cried out and woe and maybe then in a little bit of anger to God I like to think he focused on those words of the prophet that help remind him how solid a foundation he had in God the Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth rock solid foundation We all need a little recovery time, don't we? We all need those little reminders that we cannot do everything and help everyone. I mean, really, there was only one Savior, and even he had to take some time off. So, yes, to be disciples, we're supposed to follow Jesus' steps. We're supposed to carry on his ministry of healing, proclaiming the good news, and resisting the forces of evil. It's a tall order for us. But we also need to follow the example of Jesus' recovery time as well. And that means sometimes we have to step away and wait on the Lord. We don't ever know when we will hear the voice or see where God is pointing us. Or maybe we just need to have our eyes and our ears opened to where God is pointing us. But we need to wait on the Lord, placing our trust in God. As the prophet says, that those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. It shall walk and not faint, and that is good news. Our 
next hymn is one to help us prepare to come to gather at the table of our Lord. It's called As We Gather at Your Table. you to be in the spirit of prayer with me. O creator God, who knows every planet and star and sand on the seashore, we come before you this day looking for that sure foundation that gives us the strength to carry on the work that you set before us. You give us the strength to see it not so much as work or labor, but as an offering of the gift of your grace and love because we have received such bounteous gifts ourselves. So with thanksgiving, we come before you, offering the gifts of our hands, the fruits of our labors. And we lift to you those for whom we are most concerned. We, press, we pray especially for those who are affected by COVID continuing, even as we see the deaths go up and down in our own state and around the world. We pray that everyone will be able to continue to keep protecting one another and be patient and help those who need it when it comes time to signing up for getting vaccines and for transportation and making sure we all are protected so that we can have better health. We pray for everyone who is battling cancer, for all who are struggling with the challenge of paying bills and looking for jobs. We pray for all the caregivers 
And we pray for the healing of so many in our congregation that we continue to keep in our prayers, especially um, for Steve Gattery, who had a short hospital stay this week and is doing fine. But we pray for the healing of all of those who are ailing in body or in mind or in heart in their grief. We pray for our world where there are outbreaks of violence in different places in our world where there have been natural disasters, floods, and in Australia where it is summer and dry and there is fear once again of forest fire. And we pray for ourselves, O oh God, that you would meet us where we are. And so we come to you with our own personal prayers. our prayers, O oh God. Be with us as we come to gather around your table to be refreshed, restored, renewed with the spirit of the presence of Christ in whose life we give thanks and in whose death we are saved. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You that believe in me shall never thirst. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven and one may eat of it and not die. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty. For the goodness and love which, which you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son, whom you sent to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. We praise you for Christ's life, death, and resurrection, and for calling your church to serve your mission in the world. As we await Christ's return at the end of history, we take courage in the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit, with prophets, apostles, martyrs, and saints, we unite our voices with all the company of heaven and offer ourselves to you. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And filled with hope for your future, we proclaim the mystery of faith Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. And so we gather at this very simple table, and though we are scattered in our locations, we are gathered under the Spirit and the protection of God and of Christ who sits at this table with us. And so I invite you to, when, when I do the prayer of blessing, raise your hands over what you have prepared before you at home or wherever you find yourself. On the night that he shared a last meal with his disciples, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he blessed 
and he broke it and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And in the same way after they had eaten, he took one last cup and pouring the wine, he said, this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink, and as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. So let us pray and bless our elements. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for the sacrament of communion shared with all of us around this table Pour out your Holy Spirit on these elements and on each one of us who partake, that we may be your body and the representation of your covenant in our lives and throughout the world. This we pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body and blood of Christ for you Take, eat, and drink in remembrance of Jesus the Christ. The body of Christ. Cup of blessing. Now let us give thanks for this refreshing meal that we have received, nourished in the body of Christ. Eternal God, you have called to your people, scattered in these strange times. We thank you for Christ's gift of the Spirit that surrounds us with his presence, especially now. By that same Spirit, Keep us hopeful and courageous, nourished to face the days ahead. Strengthen us to be your servant church of the servant Christ, in whose name we rejoice to pray. Amen. Let me close with our hymn, God of the Ages.
And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of the Holy Spirit be with you today and all your days. Let us go in peace. Amen. Thank you.